Good evening, everybody. If you could take your seats, that'd be great. Welcome to the Grammy Museum and to the Los Angeles Chapter Peeney Wing event uh, celebrating the amazing work of Al Schmidt. We're so thrilled to be here, and we're so lucky to have Al, who's a friend to all of us, and who said, you just let me know when, and you let me know where, and I'll be there. And we have a lot of friends who are here tonight to join us in this great storytelling that we're going to get to hear. But before we do that, why don't we take a look at a very special video that was put together when Al received the Recording Academy Trustees Award back in 2006. Legendary record producer, engineer, and trustee award winner, Al Schmidt, wasn't exactly born with a silver Neumann microphone, but it was close. At seven, the Brooklyn native was already working at his uncle's Apex recording studios. By 13, he was engineering small sessions. One day, what he thought was a simple demo turned into a full session by the Mercer Ellington Band, produced by Duke himself. By 19, Al Schmidt had his first Grammy nomination for engineering Henry Mancini's Breakfast at Tiffany's soundtrack. The following year, Schmidt won his first of 15 Grammys for Mancini's Hatari soundtrack. In the 45 years since, it might be easier to list major artists Al Schmidt hasn't recorded. In all, he's engineered, mixed, and or produced more than 150 gold and platinum albums. On the RCA staff in the 60s, Schmidt engineered everything from Rosemary Clooney's sophisticated pop to Cal Chater's jazz and Sam Cooke's R&B classics Cupid, Bring It On Home To Me, and Another Saturday Night. Add to that list Natalie Cole's Unforgettable and Sessions with Elvis, Frank Sinatra, Quincy Jones, Barbara Streisand, Madonna, Dr. John, and Diana Krall. In the 70s, he helped polish Toto 4 and helmed the sessions for George Benson's crossover smash, Breezin, and Steely Dan's sonically complex Asia and FM. He won Grammys for all four albums. Last year, Schmidt won five more Grammys for the late Ray Charles' Genius Loves Company. Discussing great producers he's known, Schmidt once said that some were better at bringing out the best in the artist, others focused on the technical or musical side. The one thing they all have, he said, is the passion for what they do. Today, we honor one of the great ones, passionate producer and engineer, Al Schmidt. Oh, he's still here. Okay, good. <laughs> Al's used to being behind the board, and, and so this is a different environment for him, and we're so excited that he's among family and friends, so thank you. Among some of those friends who joined us here tonight, which we are truly honored to have in our company, is uh, five-time, just make sure I get this right, five-time Grammy winner Steve Lukather, so big warm welcome. <laughs> We also have nine-time Grammy winner Natalie Cole here with us this evening. And we'll just keep upping the number. And ten-time Grammy winner George Benson. So. And we had some folks who weren't able to be here tonight. And I'm going to turn it over to our chapter president, Tom Sturgis, who's going to share some of those thoughtful words. Hey. So uh, good evening, I'm Tom Sturgis, I'm uh, president of the LA chapter and I was just mentioning to, uh, to Mike Clank at the beginning, wouldn't it be amazing to have a room like this filled with respectful people who want to hear about your life? I mean, is there a greater honor that you could pay to a, a lifetime? So congratulations to you, Al. Um, I'd also like to quickly acknowledge our fellow LA chapter board members and also the producers and engineer wing committee members in the audience. So would you all just raise your hand and uh, we can say thank you to you guys. 
chapter committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first message I would like to share is a letter from your dear friend Tommy LaPuma, which I will now read to you. So sorry, I can't be there to relay this in person. I first met Al when I was a publisher's rep in 1963. He was an A&R man for RCA Records. Our habits, as it turned out, were dangerously similar. Perhaps you could elaborate in the comments section later. So of course we became close friends. I started producing records in 1965 and in 1972 I was recording Dave Mason but ran into a jam when the engineer I was using had to move on to another commitment just as I was at the mixing stage. Knowing Al had recorded and mixed some of my favorite albums from Jerry Mulligan to Sam Cooke to Henry Mancini. I asked if he would mix and finish the album for me, even though he hadn't mixed one for quite some time. He was kind enough to help me out, even though he was nervous about not having mixed anything in a dozen years or so. Well, it turned out great. I think that was a turning point for both of us as to what we were going to do for the rest of our lives. My feeling is that there are a lot of great mixing and recording engineers, but there is only one Al Schmidt. Al has a style all his own, and his stamp is unique and is there for everyone to hear. I love you, Al, like a brother, Tommy. Okay. Yeah. God bless you, man. Next, Al, there's a special person who couldn't be here tonight but wanted to send you good wishes. Hi, Al. This is Barbara. It's wonderful Naris has chosen to honor you in this way. You're a consummate pro who always seems to know just how to make it sound great. I loved working with you on this new record. So from a Williamsburg, Brooklyn girl to the Greenpoint, Brooklyn guy, I'm sending you all my love and best wishes on this well-deserved evening in your honor. See you soon, honey. Okay, so we just have a couple of housekeeping items that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, the 52nd Grammy Awards is being held one week earlier, if you weren't already aware of that, which will be January 31st this year. And that's unusual because it's the first time we haven't, we haven't ever done it in January. So to accommodate the early show dates, the eligibility period will be shortened by one month. So important to know if you're planning on submitting records or any considerations. So make sure that you check those dates. They're on the back of your program, so we made that easy for you to take home with you. Um, I would now like to turn it over to my friend and colleague who helped put this evening together with my team, Senior Executive Director Maureen Droney of the Producers and Engineers Wing. Thank you. I'm going over here in the shade. Um, uh, can we thank uh, Lizzie Moore, who's the Western Regional Director for the Recording Academy, and her staff, who is Megan Dahni, um, Grace Baca, uh, Yvonne Faison, Daniel Mendoza, and Jay Messina, who are all here, who put this on. If you guys just raise your hands, they see who you are. You know, Al is a founding member of the Producers and Engineers Wing and also the Music Producers Guild of America, along with someone else who's here sitting um, modestly in the back there, which who is Ed Turney, who, um, <laughs> you know, they founded this. They, and I think about Al, he's always been a visionary when it comes to the art of recording. He's also, uh, of course, on the flip side, he's a real salt of the earth kind of guy. Uh, when he says he's going to do something, he does it. When he says he'll be there, he is. When he makes a commitment, he keeps it. And if you've ever been on a conference call meeting with him, you know he knows how to keep the ball rolling. He doesn't put up with any nonsense. He's all about getting the job done. And whatever that is, whatever that job happens to be, and about getting it done with class. So I'm really excited to be here tonight. And we're very lucky to have, as our moderator, um, the museum's chief curator, Ken Visti. Uh, Ken is a true muso, if you know what I mean. He's a consummate professional, so I can't call him a groupie. Let's just say he's a real music lover. 
And uh, he's also, according to his bio, a great facilitator. So uh, let's see if he can facilitate well enough to hold his own with Al tonight. Welcome, Ken Visti. All right. Well, thank you very much, Maureen. And uh, I will, I guess, you'll all be the judge whether or not we facilitate this correctly. It's a huge honor for me uh, to be here this evening for the museum in general to be uh, the host of this event. Uh, with Al Schmidt. I've been lucky enough to speak with Al several times. He was a great help to me in helping put this museum together. You can see some of his things on the third floor if uh, you have the chance to come back and visit, which I hope you do. And uh, looking forward tonight to really having a nice conversation about you know, his inspiration, his influence, uh, the great, tremendous history that he shared with all of us um, of artistry and great recordings. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome Al up here and we'll get going. I'd like to sort of pace the night too as well for you. So. That's my best side. This one? You want to switch? Okay. Um, we're going to start off just sort of talking about stuff here this evening and then follow it up. Uh, we're going to be lucky enough to be uh, welcoming some special guests up here to talk about what's like been making recordings with you and uh, just having a great evening of conversation here and a little bit of time as well this evening, hopefully, for uh, audience Q&A. So everybody out there, uh, just sort of plan ahead for that if there's anything we're missing that you're curious about. I uh, would also like to take uh, one additional note of housekeeping, if we would, please, as you'll notice. Uh, there's a lot of uh, filming going on here this evening. This is being recorded for archival purposes and history, uh, so we'd ask that you please uh, abstain from any photography uh, as well as any recording yourself uh, in the instance that might interfere with what's going on here. So please refrain from that for the sake of history, and uh, we'll dive in from there. So, Al, I want to thank you again very much uh, for being here. It's, it's a huge honor for me. You're welcome. And, it's an uh, honor for me. Yeah, a different environment to talk in than the last time I think we talked. So. Yeah. I typically start in the same place with everybody, and it's... What are your earliest musical memories from growing up? Wow. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to go to my uncle's studio in New York City. I was like seven, eight years old. And uh, this guy used to come down and play the piano on Saturdays and rehearse or practice or whatever. And he'd take my hand and do a little boogie boogie licks with me and so forth. That was Art Tatum. Um, <laughs> And I got to meet Kate Smith, who sang God Bless America for everybody in the world, and uh, Orson Welles. Um, I would go to my uncle's studio and, and help him set up chairs and clean patch cords and just kind of run around and do stuff. Uh, he didn't have any children, and so I was like a son to him, and uh, he was my father's brother. And he was a great engineer in his own right. He was the engineer who did the... Uh, uh, the original Benny Goodman Sing 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 record from uh, Carnegie Hall and uh, worked with all the best. He worked for Brunswick Records and uh, then started his own studio. And it was, I think, the first independent studio in, uh, in New York City. So just the, looking at the equipment and watching it, a little kid, my eyes would be this big and he would tell me, that, you know, you have to treat this as if you're a watchmaker and this is a Swiss watch and you have to be really delicate and take care. If you take care of the equipment, it'll take care of you. And so these were things that were kind of embedded in me. And uh, when I got a little older and uh, he called me on the phone and there was an opening in the studio called Apex Recording Studios and uh, one of the phone, they were looking for someone to kind of break in and asked me if I would be interested. And I, I said, yes, of course I would. And, and I went, interviewed for the job. I got the job. And then that Monday, I started working. The first guy I met was Tommy Dowd. And he took an, a, an instant liking to me for some reason. And uh, we, uh, I just kind of jumped into his back pocket and uh, just followed him around. and. He even bought me a little notebook and uh, where I would sketch the uh, sessions, you know, how the setup was and what microphones we used. Uh, so it did me good stead when uh, I was doing that for about three months. And um, 